Hi, my name is Christian Hernandez from the Cloud Platforms Business Unit over at Red Hat. In this video, I will be going over how to install OpenShift 4.2 on Google Cloud. It's important to note that installing OpenShift 4.2 on Google Cloud is currently under tech preview. Full support will come when OpenShift 4.2 goes full GA. Going over the installation, you will need to keep these key things in mind. You will need access to a Google Cloud account. I will be using the G Cloud CLI tool, and I recommend you use it as well. A billing account tied to your Google Cloud account. To install OpenShift, you will need a CLI tools. This includes the OC binary and the OpenShift install binary. A pool secret to install OpenShift. And a DNS domain. This DNS domain can be bought directly with Google, or you can delegate it to Google. I will also be going over any prep work and any gotchas along the way. Let's begin. Before installing, we need to verify a few things first. Go to try.openshift.com and click on the Getting Started button. This will take you to the login page. Go ahead and log in with your Red Hat account's username and its corresponding password. This will take you to an infrastructure provider page where you can choose different installation methods. Since we're using Google Cloud, I will click on Google Cloud. Please note that clicking on Getting Started takes you to the official documentation. I'm going to need the installer, so I'll click on Download Installer. I will need my pull secret, so I'll click on Download Pull Secret. And I'm going to need the command line tools as well. This includes the OC and kubectl binaries. Going to cloud.google.com, click on sign in to verify you have access to G Cloud. Enter the email address associated with your G Cloud account. And proceed to log in as normal. Click on console. Please note that I will get an error because I do not currently have a project in this account. One thing you need to verify for your G Cloud account is that you have a billing account associated with this. Go by navigating to billing. And note that you have a billing account associated with your account. Next, you're going to need the G Cloud CLI. You do this by visiting cloud.google.com slash SDK slash docs. There you'll have information about installing the CDK depending on your environment. Once you have these things in place, you're ready to get started. Before you continue with the setup process, you need to initialize your G Cloud CLI tool. You do this by running G Cloud init. This will ask you to log in and authorize G Cloud for your account. Once that process is done, run G Cloud config list to verify connectivity. I will be making use of environment variables in order to make the CLI process a little easier. I will be setting GCP underscore project variable equal to OCP4 dash on dash G Cloud. I will set GCP underscore SA to OCP4 dash SA and GCP underscore domain to gcp.redhatworkshops.io. I will be installing OpenShift in the US West 1 region, so I will go ahead and set that as my default region. Once that's done, I will set the US West 1 dash C as my default zone. Once I've got that in place, I could go ahead and create my project by running gcloud projects create command. Once this process is done, I will set my gcp underscore project as my default project.
verify this by running gcloud config list. You need to enable the APIs for your project in order for you to do the installation. The APIs that need to be enabled are the Compute Engine API, the Google Cloud APIs, the Cloud Resource Manager API, the Google DNS API, the Identity and Access Management API, the IAM Service Account Credentials API, the Service Management API, the Storage Usage API, and the Google Cloud Storage JSON API. Also, since I will be linking my account, I will be using the Cloud Billing API as well. Next, you need to link your billing account to your project. You do this by running the following command. Note that gcloud alpha billing is an alpha command for gcloud CLI. I will run this in a script. The setup of the APIs can take some time, so I will pause here and come back when it's finished. Once the APIs have been enabled for your project, go ahead and create your service account by running the gcloud iam service account create command. The service account is responsible for creating components inside of Google Cloud. So I will go ahead and assign it the owner role to my project by running the gcloud projects add iam policy binding command. I already have a domain bought through GoDaddy, so I will just delegate a subdomain to Google Cloud. To do this, I will run the gcloud dns manage zones create command at specifying the dns zone. I will go ahead and run the describe subcommand in order to get my DNS servers for this domain. Please note that I've been assigned ns-cloud-c1 through c4. I will need to put these entries inside of GoDaddy. Inside of the GoDaddy zone configuration file, I will go ahead and add these by clicking add, selecting name server for the entry, and then adding the subdomain GCP. I will specify all four of my DNS servers. Once those four are in place, go ahead and go to the gcloud UI. Navigate to the I am an admin quotas page. The default quotas isn't sufficient to install OpenShift 4, so we're gonna need to bump these up a little bit. Since I will be doing the install in the US West 1 region, that's the only region I would need to modify. I select US West 1, and I will look for the Compute Engine API CPUs and Compute Engine API Persistent Disk SSD quotas. I click on Edit Quotas and provide Google contact information in case they need to get a hold of me. For the CPU quotas, I need to bump this up to 32 CPUs. And for the SSDs, I will need between 800 gigs and 950 gigs. For the purposes of this video, I think I will go with 950 gigs. Enter information on why you need the quota bump and click Submit. The quota bump can take some time. Google says anywhere between one to two business days. So I will pause here and return when the quota has been lifted. Once you get the notification that your quota has been increased, the changes will be reflected on the gcloud web UI. Please note that the quotas are region specific. Switching over to the terminal, I'm gonna verify that the DNS delegation has been properly propagated. I will need to store my service account credentials locally for the installation. 
the installer is going to look for these under my home directory under the .gcp directory. I will use the gcloud CLI to download and save my credentials in this directory. Next, I will need to create a directory to store all the OpenShift install artifacts. Running the OpenShift install command will ask me a few things. First, I will pick the SSH key. Next, I will choose the GCP for the platform. The project ID should be cached. Next, I would choose the US West 1 region. My base domain that I added. For the cluster name, I will choose OpenShift 4. And my pull secret that's in my coffee buffer, I will copy and paste it directly into the command. The install can take some time, so I will pause here and return when the install has finished. Once the install is completed, it will display information about your cluster. This information includes where the API is running, how to connect to your cluster by running the export kubeconfig command, where the web UI is running, and which username and password to use to log into the web UI. Go ahead and export your kubeconfig command the way it's displayed in the output, and run OC get nodes to verify connectivity. Notice that we installed three masters and three workers. Go ahead and run OC get SC for storage class to display your storage provider. And run OC get cluster version to display that you're running OpenShed 4.2. Jumping over to the web UI, go ahead and log in to the cluster's URL. Log in with the username and password it provided you in the output. Note that it's displaying the fact that you're running the cluster with a temporary admin user. Go ahead and navigate over to the left-hand side under Compute and click on Nodes. I hope you enjoyed this demonstration and invite you to try out OpenShift 4.2 Dev Preview on Google Cloud. Thank you.